Differentials are the key to understanding four-wheel drive and off-road performance, and but they're really quite complex. So in this video, I'm going to be using a Lego model to demonstrate exactly how they work. So I'm going to be using the term torque in this video and torque means turning force and we measure that in Newton meters. Newtons is a measure of force and uh, meters is a measure of distance. You put the two together and you get Newton meters. So we have this breaker bar here which is 600 mil long, 0.6 of a meter from here to here and this weight is a 170 grams. Now if I place that weight at the end here you're now looking at one newton meter so that's the force of a newton pulling down here um, across that 600 mil lever and then exerting a force on the wheel nut there now it's slightly more because we've got to factor in the weight of the um, of, of the breaker bar itself but you get but you get the general idea now notice that nothing's happening the thing about torque is that there doesn't need to be any work or any movement happening. There's still a force coming down here. I mean, clearly, if I drop that, then gravity pulls it down. Something is stopping this um, dropping to the ground. So we've got a force pulling it down and the opposing force here. So we still get torque, even though there's no actual work being done. Now, if I was to lean on this, I'm probably creating about probably 100 newton meters of torque at the moment and if I put my full weight on it and stood on it which I'm not going to do I might be creating maybe um, five or six hundred um, newton meters and you're going whoa that's a lot that that that's um, that's as much as the engine that how can one human be as torquey as the engine well the answer to that is power how quickly could I spin this so if I put my entire weight on it how many revolutions per minute do you think I could do of this wheel nut? The answer is not many. I'd probably do one every 10 seconds or something like that. Now, if we consider the engine in this vehicle capable of producing 600 Newton meters, well, it can do that at maybe two to 3,000 RPM. So power is how quickly torque is applied. And that's why um, car engines are able to do work much quicker than humans even though we might be able to apply the same amount of force using a long enough lever we can't apply that torque as quickly i.e power as the car engine can now we come to the purpose of a differential which is to allow two wheels on an axle to be driven but at different speeds so the vehicle can go around a corner Look at the difference in left and right wheel speeds as the vehicle goes around a corner and that's what a differential is doing. It's allowing those wheels to turn at different speeds going around a corner yet drive both at the same time. Take a look at the red marks on my wheels and see what happens as the vehicle goes around a corner. You can see that the front wheels are travelling quicker than the rear wheels and the same is true of the left and the right wheels on the front and rear axles and it differential allows those wheels to be driven at different speeds and if you look at this model you'll see that when a vehicle goes around a corner in fact all four wheels turn at different speeds and this is why we need center and rear and front differentials so here's a diagram to illustrate the difference between center and axle differentials. So a center differential governs drive or torque between the front and the rear axles. The axle differentials govern drive or torque between two wheels on an axle. You've got your front and your rear. Now common to all types is that they are conceptually identical, although mechanically the axle differentials might be different from the center. And they both drive two output shafts, which allow the shaft to turn at different speeds so the car can easily turn corners. That's essentially the purpose of a differential. Now, not all 4x4s have center differentials. Um, you, I've got another video where I go through selectable, selectable four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, etc. But they all have front and rear axle differentials with some very rare exceptions. Now, some center differentials actually aren't differentials. They're clutches, but you can, you can think of it as doing the same thing as a center differential, which is governing torque between the front and the rear axles. So this is a Lego model I built to demonstrate differentials. Now it's got three differentials, one in the centre, one at the front and one at the rear. And we're going to be starting off by taking a look at the centre differential. So here's the battery, there's the motor turning a small cog, turning a big cog, which turns this shaft here, which then turns that 
um, cog and then that differential. So that's how that looks. So starting with the center differential then. So we've got the front output shaft here and we've got the rear output shaft there. Now, at the moment, the resistance is equal. So the front wheels are equal, equally as easy to turn as the rear wheels. So because the differential is equalizing torque, both rear and front wheels are turning at the same speed. And the amount of torque generated by this motor is dependent on the resistance. Now, because I'm holding the model up in the air, there's not much resistance. If I was to put it on the ground, you can hear and see that there is more resistance because I'm stopping the model moving. You can hear that the motor is straining and also you can see it slow down. I lift it up and it can go quicker again. So the more resistance you get, the more torque you're able to produce. You can't produce maximum torque if there's no resistance. Now what happens if I increase the resistance at say the back axle and leave the front at the same? Well, here's what happens. Now, what the differential is doing now, it's saying, okay, this shaft, this shaft here is easy to turn because these wheels are in the air, and the amount of torque required to turn the front wheels is what gets sent to the back wheels. So this shaft here, the differential is trying to turn it, but only with the amount of force required to turn the wheels in the, uh, the, front, the front wheels, which are in the air, very easy to turn. Now, if I slightly lift up the back of the car, then you'll see that start to go as I reduce the resistance there. I drop it down and you can see then um, it becomes harder to turn. And the same goes the other way. I lift that up and instantly I've increased, increased resistance here, less resistance here. How much torque gets, to sent, gets sent to the front um, axle? Well, it's the amount of torque required to turn these wheels in the air. And again, if I make the resistance great but equal front and rear like that then you can see that the car does try and turn all four wheels so that's important for off-roading because you can get into a situation where you've got very little traction on the front wheels and they can spin easily and therefore you don't get much torque to the rear wheels which is a problem and that's why you lock center diffs and we're going to come on to that in a moment. Now it's less of a problem for performance cars, road cars which are all-wheel drive because generally they have all four wheels on the ground at any point. However they also have um, uh, they also might, under acceleration, have less traction on the front than the rear, so you do need something in the middle other than just a simple differential like this to help sort of manage the torque distribution to the front and the rear. Now here's another demonstration of that principle. Vehicles in the air at the moment, equal resistance front and right, uh, front and rear, put it on the ground, less resistance here, torque equalization. Now, if I make this back axle harder to turn, what's going to happen is more force is going to be required to turn this shaft here, and that means more force or torque is going to be transmitted to the front wheels. So, I'll just pick up a little bit, start to make it. You can see that now the front wheels start to spin. And when I take my fingers off, that stops. And that's effectively how brake traction control works but we'll do that across an axle as well so there's your force equalization in an open differential now an interesting thing about um, differentials like this is that they work backwards in a way so if i turn these wheels and that is open you can see that uh, i'm turning the front wheels backwards and the back wheels go forwards and vice versa like so now I'm going to lock the centre differential, which, is, which I'm going to do by pushing that cog over there and that over there. Now that has the effect of neutralising the effect of the differential as if, it, as if it didn't actually exist. And let's start up the model and see what difference it makes. When the wheels are in the air, there's no difference at all to the open differential. And when I place all four wheels on the ground, again, no difference there either. You can hear the motor straining as it's generating um, more torque against that resistance. Okay, so let's try putting just one axle on the ground. And you can see here that there is a difference. The, the model's trying to turn the wheel with greater resistance, and the same is also true when I put the rear axle on the ground. So what's happening here is that 
this shaft must turn the same speed as that shaft because in effect they're like just one single shaft so we've got the same speed happening at the front axle with a drive to the front axle and a drive to the rear axle whereas with the open differential we could have different speeds but the same torque here with the differential in effect locked um, and taken out of the equation we've got differing amount of torques but the same rotational speed front to rear now when we've got an open differential like this we can actually have just one wheel in the air and that just starts to spin. Now why is that? Well which wheel is easiest to turn? Out of all the three wheels that one is easiest to turn. So this differential here will turn that wheel and then this one will go okay what's easiest to turn the front axle or the rear axle the front axle and that's what happens when you've got three open differentials. Now to fix that what we need to do is to lock the center differential eliminate it so let's do that okay now what's going to happen is at least one of the wheels on this axle must turn and at least one of the wheels on the front axle must turn so if i try that again you can see that it's trying to turn that wheel if i put that one down it's trying to turn the other one but at least one of these rear wheels must be turning now we could do this or, or we could do that and those two wheels can be stationary but remember at least one of the wheels on the axle must be turning and again the common off-road situation the cross axle situation like you see here with diagonal wheels now i can demonstrate brake traction control of this model as well if i put this wheel on the ground of course the differential finds this one easier to turn so the amount of torque required to turn this wheel is what that wheel gets which isn't very much now if i use my thumb to increase the resistance on this wheel then remember the amount of torque that wheel gets is going to be the same as this one so let's just do that see that so if i increase that resistance again you can see the wheel goes up and if i if i stop this wheel completely then that one spins so that's what brake traction control is doing. The computer is noticing a difference between this wheel and that wheel and going, hang on, that wheel is spinning madly. I'll just apply the brakes. A bit like, like that. Probably a bit better than what I'm doing with my thumb, but you get the general idea. Okay, now what we're going to do is lock the axle differentials, the rear and the front. So at the moment, we could get into that situation where we have diagonal wheels spinning. Well, what we can do is just lock the axle differentials now the, the mechanism here is pretty much the same as the one here except i've put a, a lever in um, just to make it a bit easier but conceptually it's the same now this differential no longer exists so the car's going to have difficulty going around the corner now if i put that wheel on the ground you can see that without me needing to slow it down with my thumb or anything the wheel in the air turns but the wheel with traction still tries to turn and if i unlock the diff then that happens now if i lock the diff there we go that's the difference with differential locks and have a look at my video about differential locks where i demonstrate that with full-size vehicles okay so now i've locked all three differentials front center and rear and even if i put one wheel on the ground like that then you can see that these three wheels are in the air have traction or so have no traction this one has traction but the model is still trying to turn it so all the torque of the motor can go through just one wheel or more usually one rear wheel when you're trying to climb the hill and that's the advantage of fully locked differentials but then you're going to have a hard time turning the vehicle because the differential will not allow the wheels to spin at different speeds going around a corner and it won't allow the front axle to turn at a different speed relative to the rear axle going around a corner either. So that's differentials demonstrated with Lego. It's a really complex subject. I've got other videos where I explain similar concepts with different methods, axle lockers and center lockers and wind up, etc. It's really important for four-wheel drivers to understand because how differentials work means how traction aids work and that makes you a safe and effective off-road driver if you can understand exactly what's happening with your vehicle.